Yeah. Morning, everybody. <clears throat> Morning. How's everybody doing? Steve, what's going on? Hey, man. Oh, it's a big one, huh? <laughs> uh, well, thanks for coming out. I, uh, tough, tough season for us and uh, very, very, um, very, very challenging year um, on and off the court. And um, but I think um, we we learned a lot from this and. I don't think, I think um, our team will grow from this and um, we're going to take a lot of the positives that came out of uh, this year, but definitely a very, very challenging year. Um, I commend uh, our coaching staff, our players, um, uh, I think the organization, our fans for, um, I think, Putting them through a year like this is it's not easy for for all of us. I think over the last decade we've seen winning in in, in this organization, and I um, for us to go through a year like that, this was tough on on everybody. But um, we really see the the bright side. I think sports is a cycle, and our organization is going to um, go through different cycles, and this is our time. But we're going to take all the positives from from this and and build on as much as we can um, uh, going forward. Um, I think Daco and his staff did an excellent job with the situation. Um, if I think of positives, I think uh, some of the talent, Scotty Barnes, um, his upside growth. Um, as a player, all-star, I think um, we are very excited about about that uh, with our ball club. So um, tough year overall, but um, we're, we're looking to the future now, and uh, this is the process that I think we have to go through in this organization, and we'll uh, uh, we'll come out of it well. Sorry, how committed are you guys to? You know, a rebuild that could take time, and and you could go into this draft lottery, and you know, you finish what, two and nineteen to finish the season, and you may not have a pick to show for it. Next year is supposed to be a very, very good draft. Uh, Twenty six sounds like it's got promise as well. So, if you don't end up keeping your pick this year, what will you do in the years to coming without uh, losing a first round pick? Uh, if we don't keep our pick this year, I think we get our pick next year. Yeah, and I think still top six. Yeah, uh, um, if it if we if you mean if we get the pick. Yeah, I mean, would you no? If you don't have your pick this year, would you be committed to making sure you uh, draft in the top six either the next two years? I, I think for us, if we don't, uh, if the pick conveys this year, then we have the pick next year, correct? I'm saying, if, yeah. if you don't keep it, yeah, right. Yeah. then you would still owe it yeah. to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And so the potential is is you're not going to have, you're here rebuilding, but you might not have a really good pick and a really good draft in either of the next two years. I think we'll see how the year uh, uh, starts and plays out. You know, like I think uh, we're going to give this players and this team the opportunity to play. Um, I, we've, we've had... Um, We've not been able to, I think, bring these guys together um, to play, and that's the plan uh, as we go into the off season is to continue like development. And these things take time, you know. Like so, I think either way it plays out well for us. Um, we get a high pick this year, or um, next year we we play ball and see where we stand. If you're not picking high next year, then um, your team is good or your team is progressing the right way. That's the way uh, we've seen it. That's the way it's been also in the past. Uh, I think we've picked in the lottery, um, I, I think it's three times um, with um, with Jakob, Grady and Scotty, you know, like, and 
where we attack the draft the same way. Anyway, we try to find talent. As, um, and sometimes you're going to have success at it, and sometimes um, you're not, uh, especially when you pick uh, pick late. But we understand what you know picking early is, and we're committed uh, to it, and we're going to see where the growth of this team is, and uh, we'll go we'll go from there. To follow up on your question, I, you've spoken a lot about the need for patience in this building process. And, and to your credit, you guys have been patient all the way through, but you've also valued winning. Do you think it's going to be tough as this process goes forward for you guys to remain patient and see this process through? And I guess avoid the temptation to potentially try to expedite the process before you're ready to do so. Uh, we're going to do what's best for the team, uh, to be honest, you know, like and we're going to try and grow this team the best possible way, use our instincts and experience to to build this team um, uh, the best way. Nothing is going to be, everything we do here is patient. You, you know that, you know, like that's kind of how we've been. Uh, we were patient this year. Um, it takes a lot of patience to go through all of that. You know, like there are temptations here to try to make the team um, uh, try to push and and do deals that might not, you know, help the team in, in future. But we have to look at the future of this team and be patient uh, to see what the potential of this team. We have a young star in our mix uh, with Scotty Barnes, young players um, quickly, RJ Barrett, Grady. Uh, these guys, we want to continue to like grow. Um, so I think we have to be patient with them uh, and and see um, where they eventually like get to. So yeah, why not? There's going to be no. Um, I think okay if um, Ronaldo becomes available and we have to sign Ronaldo, you know, like or trade for Ronaldo. Yes, you know, like. But I, I don't know that you know we're going to um, make crazy moves here. You know, like to try to speed in this thing up. That's not what it's about. But we will try to make our team better if an opportunity comes and it's the right opportunity. Uh, we didn't. We did all due diligence, you know, like, and I think um, uh, from all the reports and everything um, uh, we had, I think um, this was um, nothing we um, we could know about and I think all of that is on the, the MBA's investigation, you know, like so um, we go out there and try to do the best due diligence we can, you know, like with, with everybody individually um, and um, we did that with Jante too. Where does that stand right now? Do you know? Uh, yes, I do know it's with the MBA and they are um, they're still it's still under investigation and um, we wait for their guidance with that. Has, has the MBA, have their investigators contacted you or to the best of your knowledge, anyone else in the organization just to like ask questions or look into things further? Oh yeah, the, the MBA is going to do their homework and whoever is working for them is going to do their homework and their due diligence to ask all the all the questions and our organization is going to comply, you know, like with, with everything and, and we have. When did the, the situation first come to your attention and what was your reaction when you first heard about obviously the very serious allegations? First of all, you don't want this for one, the kid, you don't want this for our team and we don't want this for our league. Um, that's 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 for sure. Um, that's um, my my first reaction is obviously surprise because you, none of us, uh, I don't think anybody saw anything like this uh, coming. You prepare as much, you know, for all kinds of situations in the NBA, but um, definitely didn't see uh, didn't see this uh, coming. But we act in accordance of what um, the NBA. Um, rules and regulations are of dealing with things like this and um, we move forward with it. Have you been in touch with Jonte since these allegations came forward? Uh, I have, um, but um, I think we we keep that, you know, like uh, I think between uh, ourselves and the team. So what do you mean by patience in terms of looking into the future, fans, I'm sure, are anxious to get back winning. What does patience look like to you? Um, 
I think um, well, we're, we're in a very unique situation because sometimes you start this rebuild with draft picks and space and um, and um, you try to have talent here and there. I, I think um, the, the most difficult thing to do when you do things like this, I think, is finding uh, the Scotty Barnes of the world. You know, like, and we're lucky to have um, a, a really good young player uh, like this to build around, you know, like, so I think it's going to be steady in his time and we'll see, you know, how, um, how we, uh, we grow. So um, sometimes rebuilds can take three to six years. Um, sometimes, you know, um, teams act before, you know, but uh, I think we're going to uh, see how this process goes and use our instincts uh, with it. But uh, patience is going to be a big thing with this team. Besides looking at the offseason about changing the team's culture, do you feel that the culture has changed? And if so, in what ways? You know, I, I, I maybe I was uh, a little bit unfair, you know, like with the other guys, you know, like, but um, uh, on trying to, you know, keep a stance and try to get everybody back in the right uh, direction. So maybe it came off uh, wrong, you know, how I, I used that, but I was trying to be very aggressive you know, like with uh, our team in trying to get us back, you know, like to who we are, playing the right way, you know, like playing for each other uh, and 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 winning, you know, back to uh, winning, which I think um, we've, we've proved that um, we can we can do uh, in this organization. So uh, I don't think as people, as persons, you know, like our culture, you know, like ever went anywhere, you know, like, um, but I think we got away a little bit from um, I, I maybe playing how, you know, like we would, all of us, you know, like would want uh, to play or want to see the game. Uh, and I think now, um, I think Daco has instilled, you know, like a certain way and um, we were going to um, move with that. Um, but I think the culture is one of the things that has held us, you know, from um, falling apart in, you know, like tough times like this. And I think uh, I'm very proud uh, of the organization, the team, ownership, everybody, you know, um, staying staying with this and and grinding it through because it's not easy on anybody it's just not you know like i'm sure it wasn't easy for you guys to watch there sometimes it's, it's unwatchable sometimes you know like you feel um, but we have to grind uh, through it we've seen all other organizations go through this and um, we're going to yes but if there's one thing i think you know like as has never moved, you know, like I think um, our culture has has really kept us uh, through this and I'm proud of all the workers, um, all the departments, everybody um, that has kind of contributed uh, to this. Is this at all similar to when you first came here and first started and had to build from the beginning? Is there similarities to what you have to do now? Um, yes, there's a lot of similarities, I think, uh, uh, to it. Yeah, I think with um, uh, war, I think when we first came here, um, Dwayne Casey, Kyle Lowry, and DeMar DeRozan set the tone for what our culture was. Uh, and um, this hard work, this incredible, incredible passion for the game, this winning, uh, and... Um, but those guys were experienced. Yeah, those guys were very experienced. I think the difference we have here is the player that we're building around is a young player. Um, we're building around a first-time uh, head coach in the NBA who's done a remarkable job. Uh, and it's all young players, you know, like that um, haven't really, like, done it um, on, a, on, on that level. Um, you can say Kyle, DeMar, and Coach Casey had been at a certain level and were at a certain age, you know, like when um, when we had when we had that uh, situation. So uh, similar in some ways, uh, Steve, but um, I think different with experience and, and age, maybe. Well, how, can you, how, can you augment, how can you augment that young group with, okay, as free agents or as acquisitions in the summer? Like what kind of guy do you want to get? And how can you entice them to come here? 
sometimes, uh, Doug, I think um, we we have to instinctively look at um, what the timing is going to be with that. Um, um, I think throwing Grady into the fire, throwing Ochai into the fire, you know, like is going to help them grow at a certain stage and then um, putting players like Olenek who plays the right way um, with them is going to help them grow like a little bit more. So I think instinctively we're going to look to see um, which kind of players are available that will help these young players like continue to grow. Uh, so it's something that's on our mind, uh, obviously, but um, yeah, but we're not just going to do it just to do it. Going the other way with younger guys, um, a lot of people aren't too excited about this draft. Are you? And whether that's if you keep this top six pick or if it's just the, the Pacers pick and the 31st pick? Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, like I think players are found everywhere. I can guarantee you there are going to be two, three all stars that will come out of this draft here. It happens every year, it happens all the time. You know, like, and it's on us. It's, 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 it's with the responsibilities on us to find those players wherever uh, we pick. So we can complain about the draft or a draft class as much as we want. You know, um, I think maybe sometimes people say that a bad draft class was Yanis's class, but Yanis, Gobert, those guys got picked from that class. So uh, we, um, we, we have to do our jobs and it's on us. So you mentioned the remarkable job, uh, Darko. Yeah, I was just wondering from your vantage point, what about his performance in his first year on the job do you find remarkable and maybe what kinds of things that we don't get to see or fans don't get to see or that don't translate in the standings that you like about the job he did? Extremely positive. Uh, I think one of the best at communicating, not only with players, but um, also with all departments um, at all levels. Um, I think um, instilling what, um, how he wants to play. Um, offensively and uh, defensively uh, for me um, developing players has been and will be and we know that that was his strength is in developing players uh, he knows the process you see what he did uh, has done with uh, some of the young players that we have had including Scotty you know like uh, jumping a level from maybe um, what some of us call you know like uh, last year, a year that he kind of leveled out, you know, like a, a little bit, so making him uh, jump. So um, I think on all fronts, we've dealt him a tough hand um, uh, and um, that's uh, that's on us. Um, but for what he was given, um, I think we went through 30 or 31 players this year. And uh, for us, it's... Um, it's a difficult situation for uh, a first-time head coach, but in terms of everything else outside of results, I think Daco did an incredible job. Can you talk about culture? How would you describe it as it is right now? And can culture be created with this young core without necessarily that presence? Oh, yes, 100%. Um, I think um, Daco sets a tone. I think the tone we've set with developing young players, I think Scotty Barnes sets a tone. Um, I think you can tell from um, RJ Barrett, from uh, Emmanuel Quickly, these guys, the way they have come out here and taking uh, this on the chin and, and really, really like taking responsibility to what they want the future of this ball club to be. Um, I'll say that's the culture we want, you know, like that's the passion we want and the thinking about uh, winning. You know, like, and um, we assure our fans that we think about them every day, you know, like, and I know we're all aware. I know these guys are all aware that, um, yeah, we have to produce and we have to play. And uh, but this is the process and this is the situation we're in. There's one thing I'm 100 percent sure the culture of this team will always um, uh, be at a high level. And yes, we're going to go through adversity just like every other place, human being, organization, or anything. Yeah, but um, the culture of this place is always going to be strong. Vince Carter was elected to the Hall of Fame and obviously has a pretty big place in Raptors history. What can you tell us sort of about how the organization might plan to honor him next season? And uh, is there anything you want to share about just his induction? A secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love him. He's the best. You know, like I think, um, yeah, 
like everything else, just like we're going through here, had ups and downs, right? You know, like um, and uh, maybe um, when he when he left, you know, like here. But I think what Vince has done, you know, as a player, um, not <clears throat> not only um, the length of uh, his career, uh, but how he's carried himself, maturity, you know, like even from where we say, um, I didn't know too much of what went on uh, here, but um, I know um, everybody's moving on and I hope the fans can and we can embrace, you know, like an, an unbelievable player that um, really set a tone, you know, like for and set a pathway for, for all of us uh, to be where we are today. Looking back on the uh, RJ and IQ trade now, <coughs> are you happy with how that trade worked out and what has impressed you about those two players in the time that they've been here? Uh, that was a situation, you know, like uh, we're putting and I think we had to um, at, at that point, you know, like we decided that we had to um, make a decision and um, we're really happy with this uh, two players. I think we have two young players with uh, with great upside. I think even RJ's game has started to change his efficiency. Um, um, we're going to work this summer on his defense getting better and, and three-point shooting. And I think that's where Darko comes in. And I know RJ is bought in and quickly trying to figure out, you know, where he should um, attack and, and be a point guard, uh, shoot, all those things, you know, I think will come with time. Uh, and But uh, in terms of those two players, you know, like we're extremely happy that um, uh, hopefully we're, we're able to get two young starters uh, to come play for us. You guys potentially have an avenue to some cap space this summer. You mentioned that a lot of the top free agents are former Raptors guys. Um, what is the value of sort of augmenting a team through free agency and how do you see um, the organization viewing free agency this summer? Uh, you can view it in many ways. That's the um, joy of beauty of having flexibility. Um, so you could use it in players, you could use it to take in contracts and assets, you could use it in many ways um, uh, there is and we wanted that uh, flexibility for our ball club uh, here. Um, I think where we are as a team, we're going to um, see how we develop and how uh, how we grow. Uh, we're going to see how the summer starts off uh, with our players, uh, and um, we'll see how um, we use that that cap space. How much have you guys studied past rebuilds um, or, or even present rebuilds in terms of? ones that have gone well, ones that haven't, and, and how much of it, I know you've talked a lot about instincts today, how much of it is just kind of just seeing where your own situation is and reading and react from there as opposed to looking at other teams? Uh, we've studied it from head to toe, everything that you can think of in all sports, you know, like every single way that you can, you can look at it. So when I say instincts, I'm saying to you that I'm taking responsibility as a leader. It's not that we're not looking at other situations and what other people uh, have done. But at the end of the day, our situation is our situation. Yeah. So, yeah, like it, it goes different ways for different teams. I don't want to call out like names and individuals here because it's not uh, it's not fair to do it, do that. You know, like some have been successful, some have not been successful. Some have taken long. Some have not been taken. Some have not taken um, uh, so long. Some have been very patient um, with with um, what they do. Trust me, my uh, somebody that worked for me, uh, worked with me, uh, in Jeff Weltman has gone through this. You know, like so. I talk to Jeff Weltman every other day. You know, like so. These are things that we we all study. You know, with our front office. You know, to the uh, to the core of it because um, I think. It's our first time. It's my first time, you know, like going uh, through something like this. So I have to respect it that way. So, um, I think uh, last at the beginning of the season, you, you know, in reference to Dennis Schroeder, speaking of free agents, you thought that might have been a way for the team to be to improve with Fred moving on. You know, maybe your theory on why that didn't work out, and also, you know, if you look at some of the free agent signings that have been made the last couple of years. There's, there haven't been many, very many impactful ones. And, you know, we're not talking big money free agents, but, you know, the biannuals, the mid-levels, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And just, 
you know, so maybe looking at Dennis and then maybe kind of have you assessed why the effort to add sort of peripheral talent hasn't really worked out very well. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, uh, Grange, that um, we've we've studied um, all of this, you know, like and. I we 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 just haven't done the last couple of years. We just haven't done very well, you know, like in assessing, you know, like what those um, those fits could be, you know, like. But when you have the the staple pieces like we had, you know, like um, sometimes you think that um, with with our jobs, you think bringing in, you know, like a certain piece is not going to affect as much. You know, like because you have staple pieces like a Scotty Barnes or like a Pascal Siakam or Giannanobi, those kind of uh, players. But um, on the lower level, you know, like um, we 100% need to do like a better job uh, of finding, you know, um, some of those um, players. Sometimes Ado Porter didn't work out because um, there's this. Uh, he got injured, you know, and those those sometimes those things are hard. But yeah, we take responsibility. I, I don't. When I looked at uh, Dennis Schroeder, and when we looked at Dennis Schroeder, we absolutely like studied it. We saw a point guard that is going to be a tough defender, and and come and play here for the team. And you know, unfortunately, um, I don't know if we um, we gave it enough time, um, but. Definitely, the time that he was here, um, and not not his fault or anything, but um, I think more our fault. It didn't work out. Whether it's uh, through the draft or free agency, what's the type of player that you know you, you were looking to acquire going to next season? Um, I think when you look at the draft, I think it's going to be best talent, and uh, we always look at the talent. Um, but that uh, when we when we at, when we attack the draft, but. Uh, honestly, like our team is not at a point where um, we can really pick and choose. I know backup point guard is something that we'll we'll focus on a little bit. Um, I think a wing defender type player is something we'll we'll focus on. I think we've been unlucky in the um, in the last year or so with a really um, maybe a backup big that is young and suits us in, in some kind of way. We had high hopes. We forget that one of the shockers this year for us was Christian Coloco. Um, and we had high hopes for Christian Coloco on how he was going to play for us and um, a future center for this team. And um, that didn't work out for health reasons. And also Jante Porter, you know, like we don't know where that's going to go. So I think those were two um, good finds for us that fit our program, you know, like that uh, maybe we were unlucky on, in some kind of way. I don't know if this is at your level or above you or how it works in the organization, but when you raise ticket prices, as you've done for next season, is that a decision that you make or is that a decision that's made above you? And why, considering the kind of year that you've had, would you go in that direction? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's, 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 it's above me, but it's also concerning like my team. Uh, so yes, we, we have, um, hundred percent input, uh, in this. I think we have to look at, uh, market prices everywhere. We have to look at the MBA. Um, I think we, uh, we have to consider uh, our market and we have to consider the fans too uh, in every way. So it's been looked at in, in, in every, every sing, uh, possible way that uh, it can be looked at and studied uh, as much as we can and considered. A lot of consideration is, is made into this. So um, when these kind of moves are made, you know, like we feel... Um, you you feel for uh, for the fans uh, sometimes you know like but this is how uh, business works and we have to uh, keep plying away. What would you like to see from this summer from Scotty and kind of a, a step forward next year? I think it's continuous growth. You know, like I just spent last couple hours with Scotty uh, uh, this morning, spending a lot of time with him, and he's. Um, um, He's very passionate. Um, I think he's very anxious. Uh, I think not playing um, really like um, got him in a different mindset. I can already I can already tell the way he sees the game and the way he actually even talks. Um, but um, he's focused on his shooting. 
Uh, he's focused on on strength, leg strength. He's focused on um, <laughs> shot blocking. You know, like he's focused on being a really good defensive player uh, for this team and being a leader. And that's what we want to see, you know. But um, guidance, you want to guide these players in the right way. Scotty is not somebody that you have to like instill passion or work ethic, to be honest. You know, like I think um, some of the critics in the past where, you know, like does Scotty um, uh, work or is he... Scotty works, but sometimes he just doesn't want to do it here. And sometimes Scotty will be in Scotia Bank, like working, you know, like, but now Scotty has the maturity that he has to come and work with his teammates and, and work here, you know, and, and um, so it's never been a question his work ethic or how he uh, is, is uh, for me, his passion is always there and we just need to guide him. But uh, that guy is full of passion and he wants to win, you know, and I think he's really matured as as a player. And this year um, he's gone through a lot and um, I think he'll, um, we're going to come out of this well uh, in terms of him. You mentioned that uh, a wing defender is something you would like to look for this summer. Um, you mentioned Scotty wants to is really serious about improving his defense. When you look at the the core pieces you have in place, do you see the potential for this team as a, to get to a really high level defensively that you need to get to to win? Uh, yes, because I think Scotty is going to um, continue to grow as a defensive player. I think quickly we'll learn our schemes more. Uh, I think RJ is going to take on the challenge, and I think Jakob is one of the high level like defensive players uh, we're trying to groom uh, Ochai already has the abilities to be a defender um, they're just young you know and I, I think um, that it's going to come with time uh, with, with these players and we have to add more uh, and we'll see you know like how uh, we can add more is where we saw um, Christian Coloco as a rim protector you know like we have to figure out how we find you know, like some more of those players. But in terms of defense, I think um, we're, we're going to continue to um, to grow and get better and find the talent that fits. Is the door closed on Coloco if he's cleared eventually to return here? Is it uh, we're still checking on it, you know, like um, we're still keeping uh, 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 tabs on him and we'll see we'll see how things go um, with his medical. I can't comment here on um, where his medical is, but... Um, um, we wish him, we really wish him the best. Do you think it's easier or harder to relate to young players, you know, after the experience that you've had in the NBA than it was when you first entered the league? Uh, that's a tricky question. Uh, you know, some of us as human beings, we, we just are going to have the opportunity to relate to this youth, you know, like or, or young players um, with our jobs all the time. And I think rather than complain about this generation, I think we have to figure out ways um, to be better at relating to them, you know, like and seeing um, maybe innovating and seeing where um, the world is going with social media, our phones, all the things that um, we feel affect um, this life um, now. Um, so is it easier? Um, I think there are challenges to it, but when I think of um, when I took the job in Denver and the kind of players we had and um, and really like getting developing relationships with Carmelo, with Kenya Martin, with um, all the players that we had, you know, like I still have unbelievable relationship, relationships with them. You know, I, uh, for me, it's how you relate to them. And it's not all going to be the same. Uh, you have to figure out ways to get to people and relate to people. And um, we we'll always try our best to relate the, the best possible way. So you have uh, two key free agents this summer uh, with Gary and Bruce Brown potentially. Obviously, you guys have the, the, the team option. Do you see them as long-term fits with this organization, especially the way Dark Boy wants to play? I think we're going to continue to assess that um, as we go. We're going to go into our, um, a lot of our team meetings now and uh, coaches' meetings and, uh, and try and figure that out. I think um, we had 
really good meetings with Bruce and, and Gary, um, exit meetings. And um, uh, for me, the, the most important thing is what do they bring to the table? You know, like um, what, do, what uh, kind of talent do they have, uh, their character? And um, I think um, they do have special talents that they bring and um, we'll see how we uh, continue with that and how the market assess, assesses that. Do you want to see Scotty on the U.S. Olympic team? Huh. Yeah, I, I, I do. I always do. I, 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 I want to. You know, if, um, I saw that roster. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, when Kawhi is the last guy you add to the team, you know, like, I mean, what can you say? That's like all-star, like, loaded uh, there, and really excited to watch that team. And I think um, we actually talked to Bobby and. Uh, and, and Scotty and I talked about this a few minutes ago, and he wants to play um, USA basketball. He has played USA basketball at all levels and wants to play at this level for sure at some point. The players had, the players had glowing reviews about Garrett Temple in their um, availabilities. What, why is it important to have someone like Garrett on the team, and what do you think his impact has been on the team as a whole? Uh, as a leader, um, a veteran player, positivity, um, ready to play, um, great voice, um, great demeanor. Um, he checks it all, uh, to be honest. You know, he's, um, he's tough. Um, he's been, he, he, was, he was very positive for us, I think, this, um, uh, this, this year. And um, if, if you're asking for like a veteran, you know, and a, a veterans that, that really uh, impact your team in some kind of way, even when they're not playing, I think for me, um, Garrett Temple and Thaddeus Young, really like they, they are those guys, you know, like they, they fit that mode and um, we're proud that we have, we had those guys and um, we have Garrett, he's, He's a coach, you know, like he's he's a player, he's, he's an experienced player that um, really imposes um, his experience on young players and on a ball club. So you've mentioned a couple of times and today as well that for some teams, a normal rebuild can take as long as you know five, six years. Based on everything you've talked about today and the things you've seen this year, the young talent you mentioned in place, do you have confidence that this won't be one of those rebuilds or is it just too early to even... Kind of think like that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm patient, but I'm not trying to wait like six years. <laughs> to be honest, you know, like um, yeah, it's not like uh, we're hoping. You know, like you you hope with these things that you um you you make the right decisions, you pick the right players, and um, for me, I I think um. Well, we're going to be patient, but I'm glad that we're starting off with, uh, again, I say the most difficult one. Um, I want our fans to know this, that the most difficult ones are the, the guys like Scotty to find, you know, like, um, and um, hopefully one other person can emerge on our team, you know, uh, uh, or, you know, you, you get another one and, and you're, you're on your way. Um, so we're happy that we're starting off, you know, like with this, uh, with, with Scotty in, uh, in our hands. But we're really excited about Grady and his development uh, as a player, the kind of player he is uh, quickly, um, his development and the kind of player that he can become. You can tell this is not... Um, <laughs> This is not where it's going to end, you know, and um, and RJ, you know, like has just become a different kind of player here. Uh, and um, we want to increase that development and that um, and increase his talent level, you know, like maximize it to as much as we can with all these guys. Um, even the Ochai's of the world, you know, Ochai has a potential to be one of the best defenders in the NBA. Yeah, we see that. Maybe you don't see it now, but... That's why you, you do these things and you rebuild and um, you have a process and you're patient um, with, with, with all of this. In that context, do you think it's, you know, when you go to the draft lottery, or I don't know if it's going to be you, um, are, you gonna, are you hopeful that you'll keep your pick and you'll be picking top six this year? 
anyway it goes anyway it goes uh, Grange will be will be will be grateful and we'll be ha we'll, we'll be happy if we um, if we're not in the top six you know like we get our pick next year you know like and um, if we're in the top six then you know what we go we go out and find the best guy or uh, find whatever transaction that there is you know like to make the best use um, out of it but Honestly, like I don't, I don't go into any uh, situation in the NBA draft, you know, like thinking a free agency, thinking, you know, um, negative in any way, you know, like you go and try and do, be the best, uh, try to win it, whether it's a, uh, it's a pick, whether it's a negotiation, where anything you are going to do, you're trying to like be the best, yeah, and that's why we want to be here in Toronto and get back on track. Is that, uh, based on what's reported out there. Uh, this new MLC CEO, um, uh, Keith, and how has that changed your workflow and has that changed anything at all about your workflow with the Raptors and having to report to a new CEO now as well? Yeah, I don't think, you know, like, uh, I don't think that changes in any way, you know, like, first of all, with Keith, um, we've got to know him, you know, like a little bit. I think it's so much needed. <laughs> you know, like with this organization, you know, like that lift, that energy he brings, you know, like what he brings uh, to us, you know, and um, honestly, even that, you know, like balance with, with ownership, you know, you just you just need that, you know, and um, I think Cynthia did an incredible job. Michael Frisdale was good, you know, like um, I think we all know what Tim Lyric he did, you know, like, but we're super excited about uh, like Keith. That being said, it doesn't change like how we work here, you know, like and that has been made clear, you know, like it doesn't it doesn't change anything at all, you know, like on how uh, decisions we make or how we go about making those uh, decisions. We want to work together. Yeah, that's so that's what we want to do. You know, like we want to build together, build a team here. Uh, and their contributions, ownership contributions, everything, you know, like um, to be honest, you know, like They've never, um, they never meddle with anything that we do on the team side, you know, uh, and it's how we contribute on the business side and bring it together. Yeah, like we're all, um, we're all up, you know, like um, uh, for that, you know, like, and um, thirdly, you know, it's, uh, I think people see it like as it, you said, uh, reporting to somebody else, I report to a hundred people, yeah. I report to JQ, I report to my 10-year-old daughter, I, I report to Bobby, I report to Teresa. She doesn't even work here anymore, you know, like, I report to Doug, you know, like, I, like, yeah, but I'm still Maasai. Nothing is going to fucking change that. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, guarantee. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I'm like, Adam, I have no money. <laughs> Don't find me. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but yeah, like uh, honestly, you know, like um, we we focus on our job, and like I'm not. Yeah, sometimes it's perceived outside, you know, like the, the whole politics of all of this, you know, like I'm not. Yeah, my my focus, you guys all know it. I'm not trying to paint a different picture. You know who I am. I don't get involved in any of that stuff, you know, like it's to do our job and 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 win. Yeah, I make my suggestions if I make my suggestions and. And, and we go, you know, like, and honestly, um, a lot of the times, you know, like ownership have most of the times, ownership is, has been honestly like unbelievable for us. I have, um, I have zero complaints. I know people make out the whole uh, sometimes uh, contract stuff and what happened, you know, like, but there's no, for me, there's no looming issues. I want to clear that up, you know, like there's, there's, there's none at all, you know, like and we, we move forward and as long as I'm here, I'll work the best possible way I can work here to win, uh, to build this team, to grow because it's pride for me. Uh, I actually um, feel like something was taken away from me uh, when we won the last championship and my goal is to freaking win another one. You know, like here. So um, that's that's the focus, uh, hundred hundred percent. That's all I focus on. Thanks, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.